Fuck that. I don't mind it being a little chilly. So we'll start with this. On his way back to the front entrance, he spotted Tetsuo up ahead, walking toward him with his garbage bag in hand. To fix my, 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 my thing. Yuji lowered his gaze, determined to avoid eye contact. As they crossed paths, he detected a whiff of that pleasant scent again. But he was far too tense to wonder what it was. As he passed the shoe lockers and headed towards his classroom, it was all Yuji could do not to collapse on the spot. The only thing keeping him from going was his desperate desire to go home and rest. So here's one of the things we're going to do today. I'm going to try to go a little long today. But I bought some games from Jast. Not all the ones I wanted to, because some of them weren't cheap enough, or I know they're not they're not going to be on sale when I get full money. I'm going to show, I'm going to do some sinfully fun games and give you guys a hint at some games, and I'll tell you if they're going to be, like, supporter exclusives, or if they're going to be, um, uh, uh, YouTube games. That's how I'm going to put them. And unfortunately, if you're a YouTube member and you're hearing that and you get angry, I would love to link you to the exclusive stuff, but YouTube reads the community posts, so I can't. <laughs> Just so you all know. The next day, Yuji still felt miserable. It, it seemed he had yet to overcome his exhaustion. I want to remind everyone, I got in trouble on the pet YouTube channel for a OnlyFans link to a guinea pig video of Kisa playing. Because it was an OnlyFans link. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how fucked YouTube is. They didn't even check it. From the moment he woke up, he'd felt feverish. Even his heartbeat felt irregular. It was a struggle just getting to school. He'd had occasions to curse his pathetic constitution many times over the course of his life. And today was proving to be yet another. Nevertheless, he managed to get through his classes, though it took every ounce of strength he had. Once afternoon assembly had ended, Yuji headed straight to the garbage cans and started sorting the burnable trash. His condition hadn't improved at all over the course of the day. On the contrary, it felt like it was getting worse. He just wanted to go home. He, ten he sensed T Tetsuo's presence, but ignored him. As soon as he was done, he tied up his trash bag and walked out of the classroom. And that day, he stopped giving a single fuck. Arriving at the dumpster, Yuji tossed his bag inside and headed back the way he came. On the way back, Tetsuo was nowhere to be seen. He must have taken a different route. Relieved, he started packing to go home. But just then, Makoto walked into the classroom. The moment he spotted Yuji, he broke into a cheerful grin. Oh. Makoto leaned in curiosity, but Yuji pulled away. He didn't feel comfortable having someone stare at him up close. Granted, he could tolerate it most days, but today he just wasn't in the mood. Thankfully, Makoto could take a hint. He smiled apologetically. Apologetically. Oh. Makoto waved and headed back to his seat. Feeling a little guilty, Yuji grabbed his book bag and quickly left the room. 
But just as he started down the hall to the shoe lockers, the door to the neighboring staff room slid open. Oh, Sakiyama, just a. Out popped Yuji's homeroom teacher, Kamiya, holding a large beaker with a syringe and a pair of tweezers sticking out of it. Well, he's cute. His actual personality aside, Kamiya's general appearance gave him a certain air of sloppiness. Fucking where? Tall and bow-legged, with a bit of a swoop, he wore thick spectacles and a dirty lab coat. Oh, I see the dirt. His age was a mystery. He looked to be in his early thirties, but sometimes he could pass for a decade younger. Hi. Kaeru toko ari na. Kore kara shokuin kaigi nanda ga. Koitsu o kagakushitsu ni oite kite kurenai ka. He held out the beaker. Yuji wasn't happy about this, but rather than waste time trying to get out of it, he felt it would be easier just to get it over with. Welcome, everybody. Wakarimashita. He nodded. Kamiya handed him the beaker and followed by a key. Kagakushitsu no kagi da. Tojimori shite shokuishitsu ni modoshitoite kure. Warei na. Walk down the hall and do it yourself, you lazy fuck. Kamiya always kept the chemistry lab locked when not in use. Yuji wondered if that was school policy. Sorry, just. Tanom. Give me a second. Somebody just walked in. Let me go close the door. With a grin, Kamiya walked off down the hall. Yuji looked down at the beaker inside. The chemistry lab was on the basement floor of the school's old building. He headed for the stairs, eager to finish this errand as quickly as possible. The two buildings of the academy were connected via a basement-level hallway. That said, the hallway was only half underground, with windows that let in a decent amount of light. This sort of architecture was uncommon. The old school building had allegedly served other purposes in the past, and the basement floor was a relic from that time. Yuji walked down the stairs and along the dimly lit hallway. With no ventilation to clear out the humidity, the air was uncomfortably damp. The place was deserted. His footsteps were the only sound. Arriving at the room marked chemistry lab, he unlocked the door and stepped inside. Instantly, the smell of dust and mold stung his nose. The lights were off, and the room was dimly lit. Rays of light peeked through the gas gaps. In the closed curtains, divided the neatly ordered desk and book bookcases. Yuji always felt a little uncomfortable in this room. Everything felt so cold and sterile. It was suffocating, and yet, weirdly enough, today it felt reassuring to be there, like being tucked away in a cozy little nook. Setting the beaker on Kumi on Kamiya's desk, Yuji turned back toward the door, but something stopped him in his tracks. Somehow he felt reluctant to leave, so instead he turned and pressed his forehead against the wall. It was cool and refreshing against his skin, easing his misery. He let out a long breath, enjoying the tranquility of the moment. He closed his eyes, <laughs> and that's when he knew he fucked up. A wave of intense nausea assaulted him. It was painful, like something was crushing his stomach. Fighting the urge to vomit, Yuji clapped a hand over his mouth and fell to his knees. All at once, he was overcome with dizziness and chills, not unlike the symptoms that pre, 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 pre not like that of a pre fever. He collapsed against the legs of the desk. Had he let his exhaustion catch up with him? No, that wasn't it. This was something else. <laughs> Slowly, the discomfort in his gut began to change. His labored breath went up an octave as his heart began to race. He opened his eyes, and the vague outlines of the dim classroom came into view. Everything was presage. 
probably have, just not in a while. Look, fuck you, I ain't fancy. Everything was blurry. His hands slipped from his mouth to his throat, as if pulled by an invisible magnet. Whatever this was, it wasn't pain. Okay! Well, guys apparently get horny everywhere. I'm gonna have to read that line. Hold on. Whatever this was, it wasn't pain. He was getting an erection right there on the cold linoleum floor. <laughs> that thing has a best a mind of its own in the best of times. Thank you, Tenchi. I'm so glad this fucking thing is voice acting, because then I get to be lazy. The confused groan left his lips. He didn't know what his body was after, but one thing was certain. It was out of control. And I'm saying this is someone who did uh, say a Nuta. His breath caught in his throat. He stood up, pulling his clothes back on. The heat in his body had all vanished, <laughs> had all but vanished. Recalling the liquid, he quickly looked to his feet, but nothing was there. The floor was perfectly dry. Had he mistaken a shadow for something else? As he searched his memory, he looked toward the door. Could, um, could this be the sequel to Say a New Uta? It was open and somebody was standing just outside, silhouetted by the light streaming through the windows. Well, you get to explain this to a classmate. The shadowy figure stepped into the classroom. It took one step. And then another, and it couldn't stop laughing its ass off. As it approached, its features came into view. No, Yuji desperately wanted to be wrong. Terror rooted him to the spot. The silhouetted figure lazily tossed the sack of the stack of papers onto the teacher's desk. <sighs> <laughs> That's something he's got to explain to the rest of the class tomorrow. It was Tetsuo. Tets Yuji's mind went blank. The room started spinning. With nowhere to run, he stood there, frozen in place. This is why you close the damn door and lock it. Then finally, a question popped into his mind. Had he seen? Had Tetsuo been watching? Well, your dick's probably still hanging out there. Toast. His mouth was dry, his voice trembling as he trailed off. Tetsuo answered matter of factly, glancing at the stack of papers atop the desk. Silence. As always, Tetsuo was impossible to read. Yuji was star starting to panic. He contemplated leaving, but quickly tossed that option out. He needs to know of whether Tetsu had seen him. Hey, dude, have you seen me jerking off? I'm just curious. Please tell me that's how he asks. Before long, the silence grew unbearable. Anger, anxiety, and desperation swelled inside him. Fighting the impulse to scream, he instead fixed his gaze on the man in front of him. It's gonna... No, I'm gonna have to see the free show. Tetsuo indicated the worksheets with a jerk of his head. I see what you did there. In that case, maybe he hadn't seen anything? Just as a hint of relief began to spread through Yuji's chest. <laughs> I like Tetsuo. The blood drained from Yuji's face. Meanwhile, Tetsuo stared at him silently. Not a muscle of his face moved. Yuji could see no disgust or ridicule in his expression. But that only made him the more terrifying. Surely Tetsuo must have some opinion about what he just witnessed. But, with such a total lack of response, 
It felt almost like a robot was watching him. Even mockery would have been preferable to silence. At least then, he'd know what Tetsuo was thinking. Without that knowledge, how was Yuji supposed to know how to act? He may as well have been talking to a mannequin. <laughs> Suddenly, Tetsuo turned back toward the door. Mateo. Before he could stop himself, Yuji came out to called out to him. Tetsuo glanced back over his shoulder. I'll let you finish. But Yuji hadn't thought of what to say next. He could only stare at the floor in silence. Hey man, what's up? Answer question. Have you seen a man jerk off recently? Just out of curiosity. That would have been a great way to ask. <laughs> Yuji looked up at him sharply. Did Tetsuo think he was worried about him spreading rumors? Yeah, this guy likes to jerk off in the classroom. It's kind of odd. Somehow, this made Yuji feel lower than dirt. He hung his head once more. After a moment, he, he heard slow, steady footsteps and felt Tetsuo disappear from the room. Then he heard the door slide shut and finally looked up to find himself alone. He could make out the faint sound of footsteps receding down the hallway. Oh, look, he did the thing you should have done. Just saying. But Yuji remained rooted to the spot until long after the sound had faded. His brain simply didn't know how to process what had just happened. However, one strong impression lingered in his mind. Well, time to finish. Thank you, Matt. Tetsuo was every bit as cold as the chemistry lab, and every bit is effigating. You're gonna jerk off to Tetsuo, aren't you? Gradually, Yuji regained his composure. And with it came the storm of self-loathing and shame. He's gonna go jump off the roof. He snatched his book bag up off the floor and fled the chemistry lab, locking the door behind him. He then hurried down the hall and up the stairs pausing briefly to drop off the key in the staff room before heading for the shoe lockers. All the while, his gaze was fixed to the ground. He couldn't bear to look anyone in the eye. He felt so miserable, he started to question whether he even belonged in this school. He couldn't shake the memory of what... I was going to say thank you for not showing the dick because that would have been fun to edit. Would have had it done or the memory of Tetsuo's face. Each time it flashed through his mind, his heart leapt and the image crumbled away. Would you stop getting horny at school? Just as the shoe lockers came into view, he noticed a man in a flashy garb headed his way from the opposite end of the hall. It was Zenya, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. he, does he have like a little badge of an otter? He was humming cheerfully to himself, but Yuji was in no mood to get dragged into another encounter with him. He felt like garbage, both physically and mentally. Hoping to avoid Zenya altogether, Yuji kept his gaze firmly averted as he headed to his locker. As Zenya passed by, Yuji heard the strange clacking sound again. But he didn't have the energy to think about it now. Instead, he quickly changed into his outdoor shoes and left the building, all the while praying he didn't catch Zenya's eye. When he reached the main gate, Yuji glanced over his shoulder. Zenya was nowhere to be seen. Relief flooded him. Feeling safe, at least, he shifted his gaze to the sunset. If it ever does show one of Minuteman's memes as a censor, oh, I'm gonna fucking do it, thank you. Minuteman doesn't watch my shit, he won't know. And shuddered. Red, the one color that he couldn't bear to see. Lowering his gaze, Yuji passed through the gates. And that's where we're gonna leave it. We might come back to this again today. <laughs>